Today is Wednesday, September 21st, 2022. It is also day 55 of JavaScript and today I'm going to do a modal because I haven't done it in a few days so I don't really want to forget. So I'm going to practice it today. Um, so I'll just start by um, having a container or writing a container and then or making a container. I don't even know. Anyway, I'm going to go to CSS and target the container and just give it a border of five pixels, solid line border, and then black line border. Um, and then if I reload that, I'm just going to get like a black line, which is not really what I want. I want it to be like a box. So I would have to give it a height. I'm going to do 100 VH vertical height of the screen because I kind of want it, you know, to be, you know, kind of like the screen's container. Um, and then to get rid of the spacing around the container, around the border, I'll go here to the body and I'll just zero out any margin and padding that comes by default with um, some browsers and including this one. So reload and that happens. Now, if you're on your actual phone, um, let me actually go to Control Shift I Developer Tools and then just go here, the bottom right corner. There's still going to be some spacing. Um, sometimes there is, sometimes there's not like around the border. So what fixes that I find um, if I set box sizing to border box, it fixes that a little bit. But this is not the only use for border box. Um, I mean, box size and border box is mostly primarily used um, to work with margin and padding um, and to have things be more responsive. But um, I have to keep learning about that myself. So really, I'm going to start with mobile first because that's I find that it's like more it's like easier to be to be. I mean, to make a, a desktop more responsive. Um, so I'm going to do mobile first. And so I'm just going to have this view here. So in the container, I'm just going to have, let's say, a div class, and I'm going to have a nav bar. Or actually, no, I'm going to have um, a header that's actually going to contain my logo, which is going to be its own thing. So I'm going to say div ID logo. And then it's also going to contain um, an image that's going to be a link that can be clicked on. Um, so I'm going to call it, it's going to go to nowhere. So that's what the hashtag means. It's just a placeholder. So my link doesn't go anywhere. And what I want to be linked or to be able to be clicked on is an image that has a source that is, find it real quick. Let me go to icons eight and I'm just going to get my little hamburger menu and that's what's going to be my little navigation bar what's going to pop up my modal so something like um i don't know maybe the first one this would be good i could go i don't know why it's pink i can recolor it to be black click on done right click copy image link and then I can go here and paste that as my source. That's so bad. Hold up. I know a way to fix this. If I just click on... Why are they all pink? What? I'm so confused as to why they are all pink. Black? Okay, let me see if this works better. I click on this. Okay, there we go. Right click, copy image link, and then... You know, getting the original color makes the link shorter. <laughs> there we go. All right, so um, nothing um, usually appears unless, you know, it's, on, it's on another tag, but usually you would have to give it a height and width. Um, I think that if I could just, let's see, probably give, I'm not even sure I need the link. I don't know if it's a best practice to like have it inside a link tag. It's not even a link tag, it's an A tag but I like it to call it, I like to call it a link, but that's like bad because there's an actual link tag. That's besides the point though. I'm trying to think, would it be better to, like semantically speaking, would it be better to have it surrounded by a link, like an A tag or not, or just have like the image by itself? I'm not sure. Cause with JavaScript, you know, with just, with just making a modal with CSS itself, you would need the A tag or would you? No, yeah, you would because you need something like to be clickable but if you're doing it with javascript really anything is clickable because if you like you know you use event handler so but i'm doing this with javascript so i'm not sure i'm gonna, i think i'm gonna try to do this without the a tag see if that works if not i'll go back to it 
Okay, so let me give this an ID and I'll give it an ID of, oops, the image is supposed to go first. Um, ID of, let's say, menu. Okay, so that's that. Let me go to CSS now and I'll just, first of all, target the header, give it a border of five pixels solid black. And then I'll also target the menu, so it's an ID, so I'll do hashtag menu, because that's how we target IDs, and dots classes. And I'll give this a height of 25 pixels and a width of 25 pixels. Save that reload. Um, and then I'll make sure to move it all the way to the right. But here's the thing, the logo, let me see if I could get a, a logo from Unsplash real quick. I just need like a random logo. No, not like this. Hold on, draw.io. What is going on? Nope, wrong thing. No, this is the wrong thing. I'm trying to look for that. Um, What's that site? Okay, I just figured it out. It's called Undraw. I don't know why I did draw.io. Anyway, um, these are not really logos. I think I'm going to use one of these, though, for um, the actual image. Uh, let's see. But I don't think anything is an actual logo here. I just need... Okay, let me go... I think I have icons here, right? So let me pick, like, a theme. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with, like, a... Um, the theme I think is going to be like team creation. So maybe it's like a company that can find the right team for your business. I don't know. We're going to go with it. So I chose this one. I'm going to download either, I'm going to download the SVG and I'm going to go here to files and add a file. Oh, no, wrong thing. A little com upload file and then go to downloads. And I believe it's this one over here. I'm going to click on it. So it should be that. And I'm going to rename it to, I don't know, image. All right, so that's kind of the idea, but that's also still not the logo. But with knowing now what my thing, like my whole thing is, I think I can now just um, find a logo in Icons 8 and see how that works here. Okay, so the logo, maybe I can search up like something, I don't know, team or maybe like thinking or something or connections. I need something very, like, I want something sleek. Maybe this. Or maybe that. Or maybe this. Or maybe that. I think maybe this one. Okay, um, I'm not sure what color I'm going to make my page, so I might come back and just get a different color, but for now I'm just going to take this one and I'm going to go into the HTML. And you know what? Instead of putting it in here, I can, this is, there's another way, so I don't really need to put the source in here. I could also, well, actually I kind of do, but um, if it's a div, I don't really need to put like an image tag in here. I could just go into CSS and then target the logo and just give it a background URL and paste the link there. Um, now, if I run this and I reload, it's not going to show up because there's no height and width yet to the logo, so I'm just going to give it a height of 25 pixels and a width of 25 pixels and save that reload. Okay, no. And then I want to make sure that background size is covered so that the actual logo covers the entirety of its container. There we go. Um, and then here's a problem. The logo and the hamburger menu are on top of one another, and I want them to be side by side. So the, what I'll do is I'll go to the header, which is what contains both of these things, and I'll just give the header a display of um, flex. And what that does, it just makes the header a flex container. And now anything, any rules, like flex rules that you use in the header is going to be applied to the flex items, which are the things or the elements inside the flex container. So in this case, the header is a flex container and the flex items 
our logo in the menu. So then I can just go and say uh, justify content and then I can say, well, first of all, actually, hold on. If I run this and reload, by default, now it's going to be side by side. And the reason is because Display Flex comes with this property called Flex Direction. That is by default row, so it's making all of the flex items be in the same row by default. So if I delete this, it's really not going to make a difference because, again, that's what it is by default. But then, as I was saying, I would want some space in between um, the two elements horizontally. So I'm going to do justify content, not so. And I'll just say set, nope, space in between. Save that, and that should put space in between both of the um, flex items. And then, not really necessary in this case. Um, actually, it is if I change the height, but I could also um, move them centered vertically. So, but that's not really going to change anything, but it would if I just change the height of the header, which I can do by saying, um, I don't know, 80 pixels. Save that reload. And you can clearly see now it's definitely um, a factor that can play in because if I delete this, it's going to be like top. There we go. So this really only, you know, works if there's a height, you know, that's like, uh, substantially affecting the div. Anyway, um, so that's pretty much it for that. I would also want there to be spacing, um, kind of to the left and to the right of the items because I don't want them to be so close towards the end. Um, I think there is this, I think if I do, um, let's see, there's space around is also a thing but it's gonna make it really close to each other and I don't really want that, um, but it's it's an option. So ideally, I just like to keep it space between and then I just add a uh, padding, uh, zero pixels top and bottom, and then I'll do like 20 pixels left and right. So that's kind of my alternative um, and that works for me. All right, um, so that's kind of the idea here. I'm not going to get too much into design right now. I'm going to try to get the modal done as soon as possible, and then I'll get into the design because the whole point of this is the modal. So, um, but for that, I actually need to make the modal. So I'm going to go to HTML, and I'll start by building my modal, which is just going to be my navigation links, right? Because the idea is when I click on the hamburger menu, there's a modal that pops up, and that takes over the entire screen, and it's just going to have my navigation links. So. Um, I believe I'm just going to do this um, either, I could do it inside the container or outside the container. That's a question that I should probably think a lot more about, but um, let me see. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's not going to have a position. Let me try to do it outside of the container. So I'll do a div class modal, and actually I'll do modal container, and then end that there. Um, and so I'll go to CSS real quick and do dot modal container and just give it a border so I can have an idea of what I'm doing. I'll do blue. Okay, and then probably want to give it a height of 100% and a width of 100% so that I'm actually able to see it. Which I still can't see it. Container, let me go to HTML. What if I do something like hello? That's weird. Oh, it's at the end. Oh, okay. Oh, that's why. So that's why it needs to be inside of the container. Okay. So there we go. Figured it out. The answer to my question. It needs to be inside the container. Um, so that's one thing. But actually, you know what, I'm not even sure, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. So if I just go and say modal container, I think, no, I can do position absolute and then from the top zero, um, from the left zero. And so when I do that, it should go all the way and cover everything. So I really don't need... I delete this let me see 
Okay, so that I do need. But then let me see if I were to just move it outside of the container, what would happen? Nothing. But if I were to put it inside, not, it is, there's no difference, right? Because again, the position is absolute, so it's not really relative to the container anymore. So again, I'll try it outside of the container and see where that gives me um, issues. But um, yeah, so that's the modal container, and inside the modal container is going to be my modal. So I'm going to do a div class modal, and inside the modal is just going to be my navigation bar. So um, really, that's going to be a unordered list, right? Um, and then each unordered list has a list item. And for me, the list items are going to be a tags that lead to nowhere. So I'm going to say link, something like that. I think I'm just going to go from the get-go and just label them. So let me save, reload. That's what we have so far. I'm just going to copy it and paste and then change what they say. So this one can be like contact. This one can be pricing, um, testimonials. Whoops. Hopefully I spelled that right. Yeah. Okay. So then here's the problem though. They're all the way at the top left corner and I want them to be at the center. So what I'll do is I'll just take the modal and target it, which actually is within the modal container. So I'll just give it like red color. That's what it looks like. So really, I need this to be the same height and width as its parent, which is the modal container. There we go. And then what I could do is I can give the modal a display of flex. Um, and then here's the thing. When I do that, it's now going to do nothing. So I could do justify content center to center the navigation bar horizontally. And then I can do align item center to center the navigation bar vertically. So it goes all the way to the center. And then what I can do is um, I think it would be best if I were to go to the index HTML and maybe either give this a class or maybe not just because there's only going to be one ul i think i might just target the ul although this is not best practice and i might just uh give it a border five pixels solid black right and that's what i'm working with and really what i want is the a tags to target the a tags. So what I'll do is I'll go to HTML and give all of the a tags a class of link because they are all links. And so now instead of targeting each a tag or just like a, I can do class link, and that should apply to all of the links or all of the elements that have that um, class. So what I would want to do is make the font size bigger than it is already. I'm gonna say 40 pixels and see what that gives me. So that's fine. Then I would want to move, remove the um, underline. So really that's a text decoration property and I have to set that to none because currently it's set to underline. Okay, then to get rid of the bullet points, that's actually a list item property. So I would have to target the list item, which is a UL and then LI. So that's the hierarchy. So I would just have to say UL, LI, and then set the list style to none and that should get rid of the bullet points and then I would want um, them to be kind of aligned how do I say this horizontally at the center so I want home to kind of be at the center pricing to be at the center um, not them all to be like left aligned so what I'll do um, is I'll target the UL and I can do two things. I could do the first way, which is the easy way, and just do text align center. Save that and reload. Um, 
or I could do the second way, which is kind of the more, not complicated, but longer. Just give it a display of flex, justify content center, right? Um, and that's going to just center them just as, whoa. Okay, and the one thing I forgot is again, display flex by default has flex direction set to row. So all of the items are gonna be in the same row. So you just wanna overwrite that and say column if you're gonna do this this way. Oops, I haven't saved. Is this thing like frozen? All right, there we go. And then align items center. And that does it. So, but I think that the easier way is to just do text align center, to be honest with you. Um, oh, and get rid of the flex, obviously. So I'm not really sure why it's kind of like to the right, the UL. So I think what I can do is go to the modal and just do um, padding from the left, no, from the right of 20 pixels and see if that just moves it a little bit to the left. Or not. Hmm. Yeah, not working. What if I did margin right? I think that would work best if I put that in the UL instead. There we go, but it's not really fixing the issue because it's not centered. Hmm. What if I delete the borders real quick of the modal and the modal container and see if that kind of is a reason why? No, not really. Hmm. Okay, well, let me just put these borders back. All right, so despite the fact that we had to do a little hack to move it in the center. Um, I think that's pretty good. I guess the only thing that um, I could do is like the font and then um, the font color, but that's just later. I'm just trying to get the functionality working here. So for the model container, I'll give it a background of, um, I don't know, what color? Pink? I could do yellow. I could do pink and yellow. Just pink. And then I can go and just paste it in here in the REPL. Save that, reload. There we go. And then obviously now would be the time to change the color of the links. Okay, and then I would actually give it some Padding these list items. I could do like a padding of 10 pixels. So there's space in between the list items Right, and then I could also do let's say font weight and set that to bold Okay, nope, that's really bad. Never mind All right, we're gonna leave it like that and then the other thing would be to get out of the um, what would you call it? The modal, I would need like an X button. So I'll just go and open up a new icons eight and just kind of search up for an X. And then I could just uh, grab pretty much any one I like and just right click copy image link and then I'll actually go to index HTML. And where is it? Inside, I'll actually put it inside the header so it follows that same um, format. I'm just going to give it an ID of X and then I'll do source and paste the source in there, which is the link where I'm getting it from. 
and um, I'll go to CSS and then I'll just target it and then I'll give it a display of none for now so it's not like apparent even though you don't even see it here um, and then yeah that's kind of the idea but even when it is apparent I want it to have a position of let's say not a position but a z-index of one so that it's like above everything and then I would also do height 25 pixels and width 25 pixels And let me try doing background size hover. All right, so it's not appearing. So let me see what I could do about this. If I just go and comment out the background real quick, I'm trying to see if it's appearing, but like not on top. Yeah, it's not even appearing. Where is it? So I don't even see it. So display, oh, duh, display is none. There we go. So that's kind of what it is. Um, let me uncomment this and see if it appears now. Yeah, it does, perfect. So that's kind of the idea. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it showing? Uh, maybe because display is none. Um, anyway, let me just go back to iPhone 11 view. All right, so this is kind of the idea. Um, and what I'm going with, and yeah, so I would I need it to be display none, right? Uh, so that generally it doesn't appear, and then I would also want the modal container to have a display of none as well, because I don't want it to appear uh, normally. Now this is where the JavaScript comes in. So to make the modal, I first need to access the elements. So, uh, really the elements I'm going to access is the menu, the X, and the modal container. So, I'll go and make the variables of those here. So, I'll do variable menu. Um, and then I'll access it from the DOM. So, the DOM is a document. The DOM is basically the um, document object model. So, the idea is you have your HTML file, and JavaScript is actually an object programming, sorry, an object oriented programming language. So it only works with objects and HTML elements are not objects. And so JavaScript really can't interact with those elements. So what the browser does, it makes a copy of your HTML page and it turns, and that copy basically turns all those elements into objects. And that copy is called the DOM, the document object model, which is also the document in JavaScript. So from the DOM, you can use functions like get element by ID to get those elements now because ideally there are now objects um, that JavaScript can work with, right? So for me, if I want to get the menu, I believed I gave the menu an ID of menu. So if I go to my HTML, um, let me find it. So yeah, I gave it an ID of menu. So what I'm telling JavaScript is, hey, from the DOM, find the element in my page that has an ID of menu, and that is this one over here, which is the menu. Okay, so if I go back here, um, if I want to check that that worked, I can do console log and then menu and save that. And over here in developer tools, again, by clicking control shift I or going here, going to more tools and turning web developer tools in Firefox, you go to the console and let me reload um, I'll be able to see the uh, element that I accessed here in the console outputted. So just to make sure that I that, that it works, right? But I don't need that now. Um, the next thing would be the modal itself. So the modal container. So it's same thing. I'm going to access the DOM and then I'm going to use a function get element by ID. And I believe... I don't think I even added an ID for the modal container. Let me see. Did I? No, so I'll just give it an ID of modal container as well. All right, and then let me go to JavaScript again. And then the last thing I need to access is the X. So I'll do document dot get element by ID. 
And then I believe I did give it an ID of X, right? Because if I go to my HTML, um, my X has an ID of X, which is this one over here. I'm just going to make sure that um, everything logged, um, not logged, but I accessed everything correctly. So let me do modal container, save that, reload. So I should see my modal container here. There we go. That's why we want to check things because we make typing errors. There we go. So the modal container is good. And then let me check the X. Beautiful. Whoa, what's this? Oh my God, what's all of this? There we go. Okay, so everything is working fine. I did that correctly. Now the next part is a function. So I'm going to create a variable called on menu click. So basically when I click on the menu, I want to create a function that contains what I want to happen. So for me, what I want to happen is I want the modal container. So when I click on the menu, I want the modal container to appear. So the way I do that, if the display is currently set to none in CSS, where is it? Yeah, it's displayed to none, meaning it's not there. What I want to do is give it a display of block. So I can go to JS and be like, okay, I have to target that CSS property. And the way I do that is by targeting the CSS style sheet first. So by doing dot style, and then I can write the property display or the property that I want to change and set it equal to whatever inside quotation marks. So anything that you would put in CSS, just put it within these quotation marks. So that for me, that would be block. And if I save that and run, that's not going to do anything, even if I click on the button, because I haven't told the button how um, that I want to do this. I literally just defined function, like the button the button is nowhere here like i haven't told the button like like how to respond to this or like you know so the way i'll do that is by the button by the button i mean the menu i'll do the menu and then i'll add an event listener so the button is going to listen for an event which is click so when i click on the menu the button i want this function to be called is what this is saying so the menu is listening or looking for or just waiting for it to be clicked on. And once it's clicked on, it's going to pass in this function on menu click, which is going to take the modal container and make it appear. So if I run this now and reload and click on the button, the modal container now appears, right? Okay, so then what happens is now I need to close the modal container. So how do I do that? This is where the X comes in. So not only do I want the modal container to appear, but I need the X to appear as well. Cause again, in CSS, the X is also, um, it also has a display of none. So I'll go to my JavaScript and I'll go here and say X dot style dot display and set that equal to block as well, right? Save that reload. So now when I click on it, the X shows up as well. But then I also want to make sure that it doesn't really matter in this case, but just to kind of, for my peace of mind, I would also want the menu um, to disappear, even though I don't really need to do this, but I don't know. I just feel like it needs to go away, even though you can't even see it. Um, so I'll say none. Really not necessary, but I just like it that way. So um, that happens, right? Um, and then... If I click on the X, nothing happens. So now I need to create a function called on X click, which is going to be called when I click on the X. So I'll do, it's basically the same process. So a variable, so on X click, I'm going to call function, and then I'll write what I want to happen in this function. So what I want to happen is basically the opposite of this. So I want to take the modal container, which is contains the modal. I want to target its CSS display property and set it equal to none because I will need it to go back to being, you know, not there, disappeared. Um, and then I want to take the X and target its display property and set it to none because I also want it to disappear when I click on the X, obviously. Um, and then I want the menu.style.display to be set equal to block so that it appears once more. 
And again, if I run that and click on the X, nothing happens because I haven't told the button that I want, you know, this function to be called when I click on it. And the way I do that is by pressing X dot and then adding an event listener, right? And passing in the event that I want to, um, I want the X to react to, which is click. And then the function that I want to be called, which is on X click. All right, save that and reload. Um, and now if I click on the modal, everything appears and the modal container appears, right? The X appears, the menu style display, the menu itself disappears, but you don't really see that because it's behind the scenes. Um, and then if I click on the X, the modal container disappears, which is the pink box. The X disappears also, and then you have the menu appearing here, which you didn't really notice because again, it disappeared behind the scenes. Um, so that's kind of the idea, and this is the modal, which is pretty cool. Now that that's done, I'm just going to go and finally style it because we cannot leave a page looking this blink. Okay, so this is the fun part for maybe where things get a little bit complicated because I didn't plan this, so I don't know. Um, so the idea is if I go to index.html, I have my container, I have my header. Um, let's see where the header ends. I can't even tell here. Oh, here. Okay. So I would want to create something like a showcase. That has like an H1. I'm going to say heading for now. And also a paragraph that says something like, um, we'll create the perfect team for your project. All right, something like that. Um, uh, let's see. Need people, need the best people for the best job. That makes sense. Need the best people for the best job. No. Well, how about, um, I'll put it here. We find the best team. We find the best people for your project. Um, and then over here, I could just say sign up. Or like, let's say request a consultation. All right, save that and reload. Is that how you spell consultation? I'm such a bad speller. It's like, I'm always scared that I'm spelling things wrong. Like, it's really a genuine fear. It's like, I'm really bad at spelling. Yeah, of course. Okay. Delete that. Save that. Reload. Okay, consultation. With the U, not an O. Anyway, um, so that's kind of the idea. I'm going to go to CSS and just give it a border because I can't live without things having borders for some reason. Um, so I'll do five pixels. Solid. I don't know. Let's do blue. Okay. Um, and then let's look at the request consultation. So I would want a form to appear. So I'll just do a form and then put an input here and I'll say, let's do type email. Um, and if I save that, an input should appear. Beautiful. And I'm just going to give it a placeholder of email, which is what's going to appear in here. Um, and then I think that's pretty okay. I would just add a button also. So I'll do a div class and I'll call it buttons. And um, in it, I'll have two A tags. So that leads to nowhere. The hypertext reference leads to nowhere. And I'll call it button one for now and button two for now. All right, and then I'll also give it a class of link. 
so that the styles that I have for the links also apply to here. And then I'll give them their individual IDs so that I can target them individually. So I'll do BTN1 here and BTN1, BTN2 here because I'm actually going to give them different styles, but I want them to have like the general same style. Um, all right, and then I'll go into here and I'll do dot buttons and I'll just kind of fix things up. Actually, let me give it a border, five pixels, solid black. All right, so that's what it looks like. I would want um, each of the buttons to um, have their own border. So I think, you know, what I should have done instead think I probably should have given it a border rate, like a different class. I'm going to say button instead. So class of button, I'll just make up my own class here instead of, you know, using the links. So I'll do dot button. All right, just kind of repeat the same thing over again to remove the underline, do text decoration, set that to none. All right, um, to remove just the color, I'll do black not that it really matters at this point because I might change the background color um yeah so then border radius well not really let me see I would give it a background you know what these things would be different so I'll just start targeting the hashtag btn1 and then the hashtag btn2 and so btn1 um, okay, I think I got it. So button one is going to say more info. And then this one's going to be request. Okay, beautiful. And then let me go to CSS. So this, the more info is just going to have a border radius, not a border radius, just a border. Well, it is going to have a border radius. Okay, border, uh, let's do three pixels, or let's say two pixels solid black for now. I'll change it later. And I'll go into the button, make sure that all the buttons have a border radius of 20 pixels so that they're round, although you won't see it for the second one because it doesn't even have a border yet. But yeah. And then I would want them to have a padding of 10 pixels top and bottom 20 pixels left and right okay and then for this one button 2 will actually give it a background and i'm not even sure if i want the background um to be white i don't even know if i just go ahead and kind of get this color here um i could give it this background For the button, I'm just thinking, not sure what kind of color I want. Actually, you know what I want? I know what I want. I'm going to give it like a yellow. Right? And then I'll make the background of the container be pink. Actually, no, that wouldn't make sense because the image is pink. So I think it's best if I don't do that, okay? Let me not do that, even though I, okay, I don't know why I did yellow, it's supposed to be pink. All right, whatever, I'll leave it like this. So I'll leave it white, and then I'll just go and get this pink color again, and make button two pink, but then I'll make the border color yellow for the button one. All right, so save that, reload, so that's the idea. Um, and then probably do something like three pixels. All right, and then I would want to give the, no, the buttons, which is the container for the buttons, a display of flex, so that, you know, they're like within that box. There we go. And then I would want each of the buttons to have a width of 50%, so they actually take up half and half of the container of buttons. 
and then I would want the buttons to have a text align of center so that their text is actually at the center. There we go. Um, and then I do notice that they may be a little too small, so let me do font size. I don't know. I really don't know. 12 pixels? Or is that too small? Yeah. I could do, let's see, 18. I probably should have done 16. All right, but then I noticed that the request is actually a little bit at the top. So maybe instead of doing text align center, what would work best is if I just gave this, well, it is already a display. No, it's not. Display flex. So that I can now do justify content center, which is what's going to move it, you know, what I, what's what I just did with text align center, but then the difference is if I do align item center, now it's going to move it downwards towards the center, so the request is going to look more centered. There we go. All right, and then let me go to Google Fonts and get a font for the links. Um, I use Lato because I feel like that's the best one for links for me. So I'm just going to copy these. I should probably find a new font for like my main one because I always end up using Roboto Slab. Um, so I'll just do, go to index.html and just paste this um, link in my head tag and just kind of the science behind this or the logic behind this is the reason we do it here is because a head tag is kind of backend information. It's not kind of, it is backend information for your computer. So your client never actually sees what goes inside your head tag, just like they don't see what goes, like people don't see what goes on, go on inside your head, right? Kind of the same idea here. The client only sees what's inside the body tags and really anything inside the head tag is more for like the computer to know like what, um, you know, characters to use, where you're getting certain things from, how you want things to look, um, not to look, but things to work. Um, so then really this link is just kind of like a citation, right? It's CSS is looking for where you got a certain font from. And so it's looking and looking and looking and it sees that you got it from uh, where is it from this source here google lipis whatever dot com and so css now knows where you're getting it from so you can get it from there and use it so it's kind of like a citation you know how you cite your sources in english class and your english teacher is looking for you know how like where you got the certain piece of information from same thing css is looking for where you got a certain font from so this is kind of you citing your sources so i'm just going to go ahead um, and copy this font family and I'll go to CSS and just paste that in there and I'll take advantage and actually do the same thing for the dot link class for the other buttons. So I should save that and then I'm going to go to REPL and reload and then we get a little nicer um, stuff going on here. Alright, um, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. Uh, let me do some hover effects. So for BTN1... I would just want, so when it's hovered in a state of hover, I would just want the border to change to have, I think there's a border color that I can specifically target and just change it. Not the border color, I think, what is it, border size? Or not, okay, whatever. I'll just change it a little bit to be more thicker. Um, and just put the same color so that when I hover over it, it just becomes a bit thicker. Not that I can see it happening, but whatever. All right. Um, and then what happens is, oh, it's not working because I didn't spell it right. Even then, BTN1 hover border 5 pixels. Can't even see it whatever um just one thing i noticed there needs to be some spacing between the two buttons and so i'll go over here to buttons and just give it a gap of 16 pixels which is 1 em there we go although do i want that to happen not sure i don't think i like that what if i do 10 pixels I'm not sure. Whatever. Anyway, uh, for button two, 
I'm going to go and select it and then say hover. And then I just want the background to be like a darker shade of the color. So I'm just going to go into here and just go to the shader and go a few shades darker and copy that. And just paste that in there. So now when I hover over it, it should become a darker shade, although it's not happening. Oh, it's because I'm in Firefox. Hold up. Let me open this up in Chrome. All right, so now it works, right? Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right. Um, so let me go and use the image now. So I'm going to go to, let's say, index.html. And I'll find my container, find my header, find my showcase. My image, I would want to be on top of the showcase. So I'll just do a div class and I'll call it image. So div, and then I'll go into probably instead of class, should do ID. All right, let me go into CSS. And then for the image, I would want to give it a background um, URL of image uh, .svg, so it's going to know where I'm getting it from because it's the name over here. All right, let me just make sure I give it a height. I'm going to say 50 pixels for now, even though that's like really, really small, and I'll do background size cover so that the image covers the entirety of the image container. There we go. So at this point, maybe I'll do 100%, although I don't think that's going to work because it's not really within. Actually, it might, yeah. Um, how would I do this? I could just give it a certain, if I do 50%, I think it's in the container, right? So that's why. So the image is within the container, so it's kind of 50% of the container. Um, the width needs to be, let's say, 100%. What would help is if I gave this a border, you know, when in doubt, give it a border. Solid. What am I doing again? Black. Let's do red. All right, so that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, the width I don't really want to be, you know, what would work if I just did mart actually? I'm just gonna think, um, how would I want this to work? I would actually prefer if I go to HTML and the image was actually within the showcase, right? And then I can just create like a div class content um, to hold pretty much the contents of the showcase, which is literally all of this. I just have to make sure that I know where things are ending and starting. So the showcase ends here, so I'll just put an end div right above it, and then I'll go here and just put um, one here for the div content. So now, really, all of this is the content here. And if I just reload, now it's going to end up being uh, where I could just go to the showcase and give it a display of, let's say, grid. And then I can say, okay, I want grid template columns. Or, you know, it would be, okay, I could do display flex, and then I can do flex direction, row, no, columns, so that they're on top of one another, because right now if I reload, they're going to be next to each other. So I would do flex direction, column, and then I would make sure that I would do, let's see. I can go into the image, get rid of this, I'm trying to see, wait, I'm so confused, the image, oh, is red, I can't see it though, 
So I just need the image to have a height of 50%. And then I need the blue box, which is the, oh, no. What I need is the content to have these. Um, let me see. There we go. So then the red box, I'm just wondering why it's not having, like, why is there not a height and width? Oh, it's because the showcase doesn't have a height and width. So the showcase, I need to have a height 100% and then width 100%. And then I believe now it, the image is going to show up. There we go. All right, so now it's working. And so I would want um, the dot content also to have a height of 50% of the screen. So that works a bit more. And then let's see, uh, let's do width. I'm not sure if I wanna do 50-50, but I just don't think it's efficient enough. Let's see. Um, width. Maybe instead of height, we could do 30% with 50%. Or 100, like, oh, there we go, much better. All right, so that's kind of the idea. And then, so again, the showcase is the blue box, the red box is the image, and the green box is the showcase content, which I need to also have centered. So if I go, um, so the content, I would need everything to be centered, so I'll give it a display of flex. Um, and then if I, again, if I run that, everything's going to be next to each other, because again, by default, flex direction is set to rows, so I would want to make sure I overwrite that and set all the flex items to be on the same column, so on top of each other, right, just like a column is. And then I would just say justify content center. And then I would do align items center. So that's going to do it vertically. Justify content center is going to do it horizontally. There we go. Although maybe that's not the best thing. So either I delete this one. Um, and then I could just have. Hmm, I could just say dot content h1 and give it a text align of center. So that would work. There we go. And then I could grab the form or the input actually and give it a height or actually a width of 100%. There we go. Um, and then I could just give it a height of like 20, I don't know, like 20 pixels and see what that gives me. So maybe 30. All right, and then, I don't know, what else could I do? I could kind of make the placeholder a little bit bigger so I can target the placeholder by saying input. And then because it's an attribute, I can do placeholder. Right, so attributes are targeted by doing double colons. And then I can just say font size, I don't know, 20 pixels. So I think that's good. And then I could also grab the font family and give it that same font. There we go. And then I could also give the input itself a padding from the left of, let's say, 10 pixels so that, you know, the email goes to the right. There we go. And I would grab pretty much all the content. So content, let's say, paragraph, and just give it a margin bottom. I'll give it a radius of maybe 10 pixels. I'll do the same thing for the input so that there's just spacing at the bottom of all of the items. There we go. 
And um, as for the paragraph, I could also do text align center, right? And then I could make the font size way bigger than it already is. So I'm not sure what font size I used for the heading, but it should be less than that. All right, and then I'm just going to see if I can find a new font besides Roboto Slab that I like. All right, so I think I'm going to try Makuta, hopefully, or Makuta. Um, and I'll get the regular 400. Whoa, what did I just do? My bad. Okay. Um, and I'll just grab really the link. I'd have to just, you know, recopy it, and it's just going to add um, pretty much the, just the Makuta font. If I could just, where is, why is it not telling me where it's ending? Oh. Where, I'm so confused. Where is this thing ending? Okay. Pretty sure this is better. All right, and then I'm just going to try this real quick. Let me go to my CSS, and then... What am I changing? The H1. So I'll just put that in there, see what that looks like. Save that and reload. Uh, do I like that? I'm not even sure. And then I can do the same thing for the paragraph. I feel like it's hard to read. Or maybe it's like nice, I don't know. Um, and then I think what I'll do is maybe get rid of... Uh, you know what, never mind. Let's see, email... I don't know if I want to do I'm like conflicted because I'm not sure <sighs> let's see let me go back to the image the image height needs to be maybe at least like 35 percent because it's really cropping it out um and then width I can do like 90 mm. or 99, 98% even then it's still cropping it out maybe what would help is if I did a margin of like 20 pixels or not, okay great alright, Um, my question is why is it doing that? Background size cover, it shouldn't be extending the height and the width. Let me go up. The height is 100%, the width is 100%. I think it's because the container doesn't have a width, that's why. So width, 100%. Let's see, does that make any difference? Not really. What if I did width of the minimum content. Whoa, okay. So how about we don't do that? Okay, so definitely not minimum content. What about max content? Well, that's definitely not helpful. Okay, so how about 100 WH? There we go, now we're talking. That's much better. So 100 WH is 100 of the width of the screen. And so what I think I can do now is, um, if I go to the image, because the image is what's the problem here. Um, let's see, let me think, let me think. Maybe I can find just a better image or something, I don't know. What if I go up here? and try to find something a little bit better. Something involving teams or like multiple people. So I think maybe this one might be better. So let me download this SVG and then upload it over here and see if that one's better. Alright, so I'll call this um, image.svg and I'll delete this one because it's not letting me 
do that. So rename image. All right, let me save, reload, see what that looks like. Um, I think that's a little bit better. And then it's still a problem though, because I don't know. Oh, let's see. Um, I don't want the margin to affect the outside. So really maybe what I want is margin from the top 20 pixels, bottom 20 pixels, and then zero pixels left and right. Perfect, there we go, now we're talking. Um, so it's much better. And then there's a little bit more to talk about. So if I go to the container, the height is 100 VH, but I think what I want is I want the height or the minimum height to actually be 100 VH, but the actual height should be the min content. Oh my god. So then that's a problem because when I do that, then the image was relying on 50% of the container. So then that's an issue. So I think, well, if the container is going to be 100 VH, maybe I can do instead of height 35%, what would be, um, so 0.35 times 100 would it wouldn't be okay 35 vh not the height oh yeah the height there we go because 35 percent right of 135 so then it's kind of the same thing a little bit better now um but let's see so the content is now the minimum height that it can be is 100 VH, but ideally the height needs to be min content. Oh no, it's actually have it the other way around. The height should be, or the minimum height should be min content. That's the minimum height, but then the actual height I want it to be 100 VH. There we go. And so now if I just do 35% at this point, I think that should work fine. Beautiful. Okay, that makes much more sense. All right, and then um, my problem is that the blue box is not really 100%, and I think that has to do with the borders on the outside. So what I'll do um, is just get rid of the borders pretty much. Not of the header, but um, let me save this and reload. All right. Hmm. There's also a border for the modal container, which can't even see though. Um. Get rid of these. Get rid of these. All right. So that's what it's looking like. Just not sure. You know what? I don't even think the yellow looks good. So then now I might just go to CSS and then go to the form and not the form, but the input. Or maybe I should target the form. Maybe that's the problem. If I give it a width of 100%, would that fix the issue? I mean, not really. So um, I guess I'll just do 90%. And then, but that's not really what I want. How about 98? No. Okay, that works better. Um, maybe even 95. 
And then at this point, um, I feel like there's too much spacing between request a consultation and we find the best people for you. So what I think I'm going to do is give these things borders so I can actually see what's going on. All right, definitely. So not sure how I want to go about this, but maybe I can just go and do margin from top. Actually, hold up, let me try this. Mm, but that moves everything else, so that's not the best thing to do. Maybe I can do font size, something like 25 pixels. Um, and how would I get rid of the spacing in between? Well, if I go to the green box, it is a display of flex. What if I do gap zero? That doesn't work. Um, what if I just go to the H1 and give it a position of relative and then from the top move like 40 pixels? I probably should have done this for the paragraph. There we go. But I probably should have done that for the paragraph, so let me actually do that for the paragraph instead. So, um, from the bottom, though, is what I would want. There we go. And then I think even then, um, I would want, like, I'm not sure. I would want everything else to kind of be moved up a bit so the content has a height of 50 percent but maybe i just wanted to have a height of 40 percent there we go but no that would kind of overlap so 50 percent um but then maybe just take the form and literally just do the same thing. Whoops. Undo from the bottom instead of from the top. And then do the same thing for the buttons. Just to kind of move everything up. And then, um, the blue box is what? The showcase, right? So maybe instead of with 100%, we can do 98% to keep things kind of inside. Because for some reason, I'm not sure why it's like going outside of the border and stuff. All right, so I think that's pretty much it it um only thing is i'm gonna just take the yellow button and get rid of that just to choose a uh, pink instead reload all right and then i think that's okay so it's kind of responsive i think that's fine um, and then, yeah, I think things are good. So let me get rid of the borders now with everything going on. Um, so I'm just trying to find the borders here. So just delete all the borders. And then for the content, for the showcase, I think that's it. Reload. Yikes, that's not looking good. So how do we fix that? Oh, and even for the header. So it's looking a little blank. Um, so I think maybe what I can do is grab the form input 
and how about I give it a form, a display, a flex, and then justify content center, see what that does. Um, if I do 100%, it's not really going to change anything. Um, I think I need it to be a little bit, like, I don't know. I think I want it to have padding on both sides. I think that's why that's happening. So let's do padding in general, 0 pixels top and bottom, and then 10 pixels left and right. Are you serious? Okay, great. So obviously that's not working. So maybe instead of that, do we do margin? Well, that's another thing. Um, and then actually, let me do 10 pixels because I do have margin bottom here. All right, so then that looks like that. And then I would actually maybe give it a border radius of 20 pixels, so it's round just like everything else. And, and then I would probably, oh, that's why I gave the input a padding. I meant to give the um, placeholder, hold up now. The placeholder needs to have a padding. We're actually, I'm not sure, padding left. Yeah, that's why I didn't do anything, because it's the stuff inside. There we go. Um, so that works that way. Um, and then I feel like things could be a little bit more centered. I'm not sure. Um, let's do maybe everything. Let's do position relative for the H1. And then kind of the same idea. So it moves a little bit to the top. And then maybe we'll do like 50 pixels for this. If I was just like a little smarter about this, I would have put everything else in a div and just do that one time. But I'm too lazy to do that right now. <laughs> Even though I'm doing more work. But... I'm trying to figure it out. So, okay, this one, how many pixels again? 80 pixels. So, again, 80 pixels. There we go. And actually, maybe I would just go as far as doing 70 so that there's like a little space there in between those. All right. And then for the H1 itself, I might just give it... I don't know, let me give it a border just so I can see what's going on. So solid, black. All right, so definitely maybe give it a padding. Zero pixels top and bottom, 10 pixels left and right. Hmm. And then if that's the case, maybe do font size. I don't know, 30 pixels. All right. Um, or maybe even 27 pixels. All right. And then I think what I can do is grab the form and instead of 80 pixels, let's do 90 or maybe even 100 honestly and then grab the buttons and do a little bit of that also from the bottom move it up like 90 pixels there we go um so i think that works out and then We can maybe get rid of the H1 border now. Where is it? 
Okay. And then I think that's good. And then if I were to just, um, let's see, what else would I change? Maybe the logo. Let's see. Oh, the placeholder font family. That's good. The input, I would also give it the same font. So that when the writing that, you know, I write here would be the same font as the actual stuff, actual font over here. All right. Um, I feel like this request a consultation should be smaller. So that is the paragraph. So if I go here, it has a font size of 25 pixels. So how about let's do 20 um, and see how that works out. I feel like that's fine. And then the last thing I would do is um, let me look at the logo and maybe do 30 pixels instead. And kind of do the same thing for the menu. See if that's better. I think that's way better. Okay. And then just to kind of check if I click on the modal, everything works, but I need everything to be a little bit better than it is right now. So ideally, um, Maybe a white background would do better. I'm not sure. I do have a different option, so so let me just the UL needs to be a little bit more centered, so I'll do maybe 30 pixels. Maybe that's better. I think so. Um and when I hover over the links, I want something to happen. So I'll go to where the links are and I'll just do dot link other state and I would just want the font weight to become bold when I hover over them. So I don't think it's going to work here in Firefox um, but if I just go and open up Chrome, whoa we gotta fix that, um, it should work here right beautiful. Alright, uh, so then I would also maybe pick a new X, kind of like a thinner one, maybe. Something like this would be good. So I'm going to go to HTML. I'm not sure if I gave it, gave the link over here. Yeah, I did. So let me just replace that. So save that. Reload. I think that's much better. Um, and then I'll give it, you know, the same height and width instead of 25. Let's do uh, 30 pixels. Ew, actually no, let me do 35 for the width, because I need it to be more even. Eh, that literally does no difference. Oh well. Um, so that's kind of the idea, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it it's for mobile view. Now I just really want to make it responsive for web, because obviously it's not responsive for web. So that's a whole other thing here. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to go to Replit and I'll have to make a media query. So media, um, and I'll say max width, I don't know, is 800 pixels. Or actually no, because it's different. Hold up, I need a crash course on media queries again. Ah, uh, let's see. All right, let's read. So media queries, yes. Import to target a specific media for the style, no. So media type to find the broad category of device for which the media query applies. Okay. Of the user agent. Hover feature allows a query to test against no.
target multiple devices, media features, no. Here we go. V and keyboard, no, that's not really what I want. I want kind of like the mid width and the maximum width. Let's search that up. Media queries, mid width, and max width. Okay, so what are media queries, blah, blah, blah. How many queries functions can be a bit? Yes, okay. So media, only the screen, and max width 600 pixels. If the device width is less than or equal to 600 pixels, right? Because the maximum width that it can be is 600 pixels. So once it reaches that point, that doesn't make sense. The maximum width is 600 pixels. Oh, so the so this only applies to anything up until 600 pixels. Okay, so this is kind of like a condition. So like this, this is kind of like where you like stop. Well, where you kind of stop qualifying. So you stop qualifying when you're more than 600 pixels. So if the email is opened on an iPhone 5S with a screen width of 320 pixels, the media query will trigger, and all of the styles contained in will take effect. Then the minimum width, I am assuming, let me, without looking, let me see if I can think. So when the screen, minimum width is 600 pixels, 600 pixels. So anything above that, huh, won't qualify. So the minimum width you can be is 600 pixels. So you need to be anything above 600 pixels and then that would apply. If a device is greater than or equal to 600, then do that. Okay, great. So then for me, I would need to use minimum width. So for me, the minimum width, well, what would be the minimum width to the phone? If I go here, I believe Chrome has this. I do Control Shift I. So the width over here is 390 for the iPhone 12. iPad is kind of starting to get a little eh. So I think maybe I'll do 400 pixels that would work so for me i would end up having to do minimum width 400 pixels so after 400 pixels i want whatever i want to happen and then i believe i have to say only screen um and okay so then let me kind of write what i want to happen so essentially i would want um be contained like what's going on I don't even know what's going on why is the image like that let me look at the image so I told it to be height 35% width is 98% so because of that okay so how about I just take the image and give it a height of 50% instead and see what that gives me now okay beautiful so how about we don't do that and we just do 100%, okay, and then, but then that's an issue for this case. Why would that work here and not, that doesn't make sense. Oh, it's still 100%. It's just that the width also needs to be changed. Um, well, that wouldn't make sense either. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. So then I would have to do like width 50%. There we go. But then it wouldn't work over here, which is a problem. So do I do two different queries or do I give it a set height, height and width? So I don't know, I could do 200 pixels 
and then do 350 pixels. It's going to be pretty small though. Yeah. Um, and it's not even aligned. So then I would have to take the showcase, and I'm not even sure if it has a display of flex. Yeah, it does. So I would just have to take it and then do um, justify on kind of its center so that it moves towards the center or not. Align items center. My question is, why is it always the opposite? Are you kidding me? Okay, there we go. Eh, but I don't want this to happen though. I mean, I guess it's a little nice. Hmm, I think I do like it. Honestly, I like it. Happy accident. This was like absolutely not intentional. I think what I can do is maybe just make it bigger. So three and 450. Save that and reload. Right? Wow, that was easy. Okay. Um, and then really the only thing I would, I would change is just the padding also on the header. So header, and then I would do padding, zero pixels, and then, I don't know, 50 pixels. Or even more than that, actually. Um, 100 pixels, let's see what that gives me. What happened? Hmm, this is an issue. Okay, right, I think that's fine. Or should I have it like more towards the center? And do something like crazy, like 500 pixels? Whoa, no, never mind. But even then, it's kind of like, eh. You know what? Maybe I could do like 400. 400. Or 500. Let's try 6 and see what that gives me here. Do I like that? Not really. So then, I don't know, 100 pixels might be good. And then what I could do also is um, maybe make them way bigger than they are right now. So I can just target the logo, give it a height. Of, I don't know, 50 pixels, but the 50 pixels, save that, reload. Um, and then do the same thing for the menus. Mm, maybe not that much. Or maybe yes, I don't know. And then I would just go to the, to the header and do a margin from the top 20 pixels so that they're spacing from the top. Although that doesn't seem to be working. Margin from the top 20 pixels. I would assume that would be working. So 20 pixels top and bottom, zero pixels left and right. Hmm. Oh, it's because I spelled it wrong. There we go. So I can do 20 pixels from the top. Right, I think that's good. I just think, are you kidding me? I just think that, um, let me open this up again. Are you serious? What is going on? Okay, I just think that 
the modal might be too big now. I'm not sure. It might be. What if I do 40 pixels? I'm not sure, maybe that I just have to have them be like equivalent. Okay, I think that's it. Um, maybe actually giving it an actual logo, as in like what it says, could also help. Maybe I could say something like, um, teamify, teamify. Right, but then I would have to go to the logo. Um, it would have looked like, I don't know, 70 pixels. Oops, my bad. I meant the logo and the menu. And then give it a display of flex. And then well, by default, they're going to be in the same row. Oh, but then that's an issue because I think the logo, I gave it, um, it's a problem. Hmm. Yeah, never mind. Let me not get into it. I don't want to solve that right now. So let me get rid of these things. Have this back to 40 pixels and enjoy my life. Okay. So then maybe actually I'll do 45, because I do want it to be a little bit bigger, but I don't want the modal to be, you know, that big. And then as for these, I could go and make the links have like a font size of something way bigger than that. So I could do 40 pixels and see what that gives me. So I think that's fine. I think that maybe more spacing would be good also. So I think that would be the UL that already has a display of flex. So I could do gap to EM and see what that gives me. Hmm, I don't think it changed anything. Let me just make sure. So the UL. Wait, then what is the thing that has the, um, oh, it's the list, it's the list items. So instead of you, I'll have to do UL LI and then just do padding, I don't know, 20 pixels. Let me see, a little bit better, beautiful. All right, so now it's mobile responsive and everything is looking pretty good. And I can type in my email. Um, at gmail.com. And then I could request for more info. Only thing I don't like is, only thing I like I've always like noticed for me is that when I hover over it, everything else moves, which is a problem. Um, yeah, and so you know what? Actually, I might just want to change one more thing, and that is the font size of the H1. So I'll just do dot content H1 font size. Let's do 40 pixels, and then let's do, um, I don't know. Let me see what that gives me first. Okay. Maybe I can do width 200 pixels. Okay. How about we do 400? Or three, I mean 500. Much better. Um, and then I would just grab the paragraph. So dot content P and just give it a font size of I don't know, 30 pixels. And then give it a margin bottom 
of like 20 pixels and I even think that the placeholder might also need actually not the placeholder but the input might need a font size that's way bigger than what it is right now and it might want to be 30 pixels Eh, never mind all right that's better all right um so it'd be like john smith at gmail.com request more info and then this happens beautiful all right i think i i'm fine with this and then if i do control shift i and i go to mobile it, that looks fine to me um everything works um if i go to the ipad it looks really cool okay so yeah that is it for today Bye.